Welcome back guys to part 2 of this CPU cooling series where we try to cool the 3700X CPU in the Dan A4 case. In part 1 of this series we cover the air cooling or the Noctua L9A and today we're gonna do it finally on the Asset X645 LT 92mm all-in-one cooler. So let's do it. It's always a challenge to install this AIO in the A4 case, despite how many times I've done it in the past. If you're like me and upgrade into the AIO, then you need to take the whole computer apart since we need to remove the Noctua L9A and redo the whole wire management. Also, you need to remove the two plastic side panel clips to accommodate the radiator. Then the Asset X645LT requires the stock AM4 backplate to be installed. After that, secure it with the included thumb screws. I have the gold rated original Corsair SF600 PSU that comes with those ribbon type cables. Currently I have the premium kit which is sexier, but unfortunately they are even harder to bend than the original ones since they are thicker. The easiest way I've discovered to install the rad without forcing anything is to remove the bolts that hold the PSU bracket and thus this will give you an extra few millimeters of clearance so you can shove the radiator inside. The Asetek kit gives you two choices of screws, longer or short ones. The long ones you can use with the included rubber grommets that come with the case. I went for the shorter ones with the metal spacers because we need all the extra clearance that we can have for the radiator. Also I must point out that I went back to my original cables and reused only the 24 pin one since it's easier to manipulate than the premium kit just because it's overall thinner. Then I relocated the whole length of it on the GPU side like so. This will help a lot since we need the extra space in the front for those AIO tubes to clear. Plus on the GPU side I would recommend that you remove that plastic transparent film since it will interfere with the wires around the GPU. Finally, this is the best variant I can do with this combination of wires and specs. I will say it every time I do a video like this, custom cables are a must. I'm still waiting for PS Lite Customs to reopen their website to accept orders, but in the meantime this will have to do. The GPU side can close, but because I'm missing the front plastic clip, it sticks out like this because there's some wires in there that push against it slightly. Looks bad, but once you push on it, everything looks fine. But again, I can't do much with it. Custom wires will solve this, definitely. But on the CPU side, we can't still close the side panel because the way I have relocated the tubes around the RAM, but if you have low profile kits, that will do the trick. Since the last video with the air test on the Noctua L9A, I have upgraded to the latest BIOS available for the motherboard and the room temperatures is higher than last time because it was such a sunny day and also I had to close the windows in the room because of the noise test. Nevertheless, I have redone the air test to compensate for any difference in ambient for this video to eliminate any outstanding variables. Then all the fans, meaning the one on the red and the case fan, are set on the silent profile from the BIOS, exactly what I did in the last video. Then I set the AIO pump to auto. Since most all-in-one coolers have the pump running at full RPM, including the Asset X645LT, basically what option you choose here in the BIOS, it will always work at 100% RPM. Also worth mentioning that this number of 5600 whatever is wrong. There is a false reading from the Asset Tech pump. When I switch the plugs, meaning I put the fan in the AIO port and then the 3 pin from the pump in the CPU fan, I got again the same exact numbers. So just divide that number by 2 to get the real reading. If you go to the website, you'll see that the max RPM for the Assetek 645 LT is 2800 RPM. Also, this false reading is confirmed by Assetek as well. Now, the really important fact here is that the pump can actually be controlled if your motherboard software allows it. In my case, the Asus AI Suit 2. Most motherboard vendors should have this type of software, or I even heard that we can control the pump with the speed fan app. Okay, so here is the pump at 
as you can tell it's very noisy and whiny. Which is understandable, but in idle and light load this gets very annoying really fast. Luckily I can control it like I say with the software and now everything is heaven again. Basically now it's on PMW mode, which is exactly what we need. I discovered that up to 80% RPM the pump is really silent. Ok, we have 3 main CPU tests today for the 3700X on the all-in-one cooler. Let's begin, here is the CPU in stock form. For synthetic benchmarks I'm going to use R15 and R20. As for the stress test I'm going to use ADA64 for 1 minute and a half 2 minutes and then a benchmark run in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I will apply this formula for all of the three main scenarios today. As I mentioned, because today was so sunny outside and I have no blinds in the room, I decided to show the desktop on screen to make everything easier to see for you as well. Now let's centralize with the results from air cooling and then we will rally everything for the complete perspective at the end of the video. So the Assetec can handle the 3700X in stock form without a problem. So this is a big win for me because now we can finally tame the CPU even in stock form. Only in a stress test we get close to 90 degrees but again this was with such a high ambient temperature and I can say these are still decent results so it gets a pass. As you can see, whatever you do, don't run the CPU on the L9A in stock form. 95 degrees is the limit for thermal throttling and these numbers I have were like spikes and then I instantly close the app so I don't damage my CPU. Next is my favorite setting for this CPU which is 4 GHz for 1.075 volts. In the previous video we discovered that with this under volt under clock combo we get the same performance as in stock form, but here we achieve the best temperature and noise output numbers. Also you can use it on air and can be safely cooled by the Noctuile 9A. But now let's see how the Assetec performs.
Well, there was no doubt that the Astatec 645 LT will have anything but epic temperature number in this scenario. This will generate the least amount of noise from the pump and from the fans in the system as well. Well now, with this information under the hood, now let's overclock the CPU and see how much we can squeeze from it. Spoiler alert, I even managed 4.5 GHz for exactly 1.395 volts, and it did manage to pass a run in Cinebench R20 for 5002 points, which is incredible, but it failed in the stress test, meaning it had spikes of 102 degrees and after a few seconds I closed the test again to protect the system. Now let's see the temperatures for the best, safest overclock setting that I managed to find, which is at 4.3 GHz for 1.25 volts. Ok, so that concludes our final test for today. Here we have the final numbers for the Assetec 645 LT all-in-one cooler for everything that we did today. Basically I'm just reconfirming what I have discovered in my previous videos when I tested the Assetec in the A4. With confidence now I can say that it can handle the 3700X as well in stock form and then there is even some overclock potential left to be utilized. If you are like me and after the coolest and quietest performance overall, then go for that 4 GHz tweak. This is how I'm running my computer now. I need the silence in medium loads when I record the voiceovers, for example, for my videos. Now with the asset icon, when I need the extra kick, that 4.3 GHz overclock will do just fine. So there you have it guys, with these new findings, if a 3900X or even the Monster 3950X can offer stock performance on lower voltages like my 3700X did, then green light to install these with the Assetec 645 LT. If I can get my hands on one of these I will gladly test them since I'm so hyped right now with these results, especially that I have discovered that I can control the pump and thus the overall noise. Thank you again for watching and let me know what other settings you have for your CPU on the Assetec. Stay safe, Alex out.